Welcome back everyone and today we're going to be reviewing the Hot Toys Qui-Gon Jinn figure from Star Wars Episode 1 The Phantom Menace. So let's take our first look. So as you can see you have some really cool artwork as per usual with the Hot Toys figures. Uh, Qui-Gon fighting Darth Maul from Episode 1 The Phantom Menace. And then you have the figure himself. You have the hands first off and holograms and accessories here. And then you have the figure. And just taking our first look at the figure right outside the box. And here we have all the accessories for the Hot Toys Qui-Gon figure. And as you can see, we don't have as many accessories as the Obi-Wan figure, but we still have quite a few more accessories than usual with certain Hot Toys figures. So right off the bat, um, let's check out the lightsaber. So this is a really cool lightsaber. You have Qui-Gon's kind of simplistic lightsaber, not really much to it. I will say that compared to Obi-Wan's lightsaber and some other lightsabers on other Hot Toys figures I've seen, I'm slightly disappointed in the lack of metallic chrome shine to this one. The Obi-Wan lightsaber has a metallic shine to the paintwork that makes it look like it's made of real metal, whereas this one falls kind of flat for me. It doesn't have that same kind of realism, I guess. It almost looks plasticky, which is kind of accurate to the movie, I suppose, because, I mean, I guess that's how it kind of looked in the movie. I guess I was just expecting it to be more metallic. And then, of course, you have the lightsaber blade here, which is removable. And you can exchange that with the lightsaber swooping blade as it's swinging in action. And something that I have neglected in a prior review was the fact that there's two different styles of connectors for the lightsaber to connect the lightsaber to the belt. So you have this double one right here, which you can remove. And you can use the other one which is just a single style of hooking it on. And you can just hook that in there. And so it's kind of like a version of it that's closer to the hilt of the lightsaber. Um, I guess I guess you just it's just a personal preference. I'm not really sure uh, why there's two different versions of this um, other than two different styles maybe. Correct me if I'm wrong, I prefer this one because it sticks out more easier to hook on the belt. Very small pieces, be careful not to lose. And then of course you have, other Hot Toys figures have these sometimes as well. You have two buttons in case the buttons come off of this figure they can, I guess, glue back on. Because uh, they're so small that if they did fall off the figure you could probably easily lose them. So Hot Toys tends to include these. And then also they include extra joints as well for the hands. You have the comm link. Which again, I'm actually slightly disappointed in the paintwork compared to the Obi-Wan figure. I feel like the Obi-Wan figure had more coloration and just intricate paintwork. And at the same time, uh, maybe this is accurate to the movie, so I haven't seen the movie in a long time. So, I mean, if it's accurate, then I guess that's good. Um, then I shouldn't be complaining, but other than that, great sculpting work and it's a nice accessory to include. And other really cool accessories that aren't usually included is this uh, hologram projector here, which does have that metallic shine that I was hoping for in the lightsaber. Um, I like the way this looks. It makes it look like it's real, made of real metal. Small piece, easy to lose, kind of fragile. So. so since I have this piece out, you would take this piece and that hole right there, you put the hologram of Mace Windu, for example, and you would just put that in there. And then furthermore, you would take the hand that's supposed to hold the hologram. And I was surprised there wasn't like a hole in the hand or a magnet or something to attach to this door to secure. You actually just have to balance it on the hand, which is kind of tricky. You really have to work at it to get it to work right. Um, and then you also have other holograms like uh, the Yoda hologram. which also pegs in this hologram projector the same way. And lastly you have the ship, which also goes into the hologram projector. 
not as much detail on this one. This one has a smooth appearance, which I'm not sure why, unless that was accurate to the movie. But. And then the other small accessory you have is what looks like the grappling hook, which is a really cool touch. Um, I like that they included that. And again, it has that metallic shine that really makes it look like it's made of metal. And it's sharp. So, sharp looking and actually sharp. You also have this poncho that Qui-Gon had worn at one point in the movie on Tatooine. So you have the neck. You have to take the head off to put this on the neck and then put the head skull back on. Um, there's no wires in this from what I can tell. It's all just fabric. And of course you have the robe which does have a wire in the hood which is a really awesome touch. I'm glad they did that. Um, the wire is kind of exposed here. It came out of my hood for some reason, so I just kind of fold it over. And it's like a similar material to the Obi-Wan figure, although it's not stretchy like the Obi-Wan figure. It's just a solid kind of thicker fabric. It feels like heavier, which is nice because you'd expect the robe to have look like it has weight to it. Uh, but nothing really much else. It's just a simple robe. And then you have the normal arm that's usually on the figure. I uh, exchange this for the lightsaber light up arm. And like I said in the Obi-Wan video, uh, these are such a pain to take on and off and exchange that I just prefer to keep the lightsaber arm on there instead of trying to mess with it again. But what's nice about this one compared to the Obi-Wan figure is that it's easier to take off as you can see by the lack of marks with pliers trying to get this thing off. And I think part of it is because they made this sleeve a separate piece instead of connecting it to the figure which makes it far easier to take on and off. Um, which, yeah, it's a really nice touch. Of course, a double jointed elbow there. And so it, maybe it does come out a little bit easier than the elbow one figure. I just haven't really messed with it too much. Um, but yeah. And then you have the hands, which you have a standard lightsaber holding hand with some nice details. Um, not as textured as the Obi one figure, but you still have the nice veins that make it look realistic. And I'm guessing it's because Qui-Gon had paler skin in the movie. So this is a lighter skin complexion for the hands. So you're not going to get as much shading, really. Uh, this hand, by the way, would be to hold the comm link. So that's pretty cool. And then you have the pointing hand, which I guess you could also have this hand hold something. Um, you have the force push hand, Qui-Gon style. And you have the hologram projector holding hand. You have just a relaxed normal hand that I guess could probably hold something. You have another force push hand, it looks like. And then of course you have another fist lightsaber holding hand or whatever other accessory. And then you have the light up lightsaber hand which is a lot easier to use. You have Velcro here that comes off on the sleeve. The batteries go in this compartment here. And then you just turn this switch on and you have the LED light. And you would fold this back down. And then you would peg the lightsaber blade in. And I have to say this is probably one of the brightest lightsabers I've ever seen Hot Toys do on a figure. Well, these are figures that I own, and I don't own many Star Wars figures because um, I'm picky. But I say this lights up pretty well. I, I would even say it probably lights up better than the Obi Wan figure. It's got a brighter look to it. And then you can exchange that, of course, with the lightsaber swooping in motion style blade. And it looks really cool. I like it. And again, as I said before, I would be careful about how much you turn the uh, hand on this figure because you could damage the wire that's going from this part to the hand through the wrist and it might not light up anymore if it, you spin it around and around and around. I would say just know the limits of here and here and leave it at that. And lastly, you have this stand, which is a really awesome stand. I actually like this stand quite a bit. Of course, I love how the, the nameplate is made of metal and has texture. Um, I haven't touched this in a while, you can tell. 
I love the metallic look to this stand. I love how it's representing the floor from the final Duel of the Fates battle between Qui-Gon, Darth Maul, and Obi-Wan. Um, a standard hook stand, of course. Um, I made a diorama of this whole battle scene that this is based on, and it's out there somewhere. Um, but I actually traced this to get the dimensions and the size correct, and then I had to find a way to match it on this side. But yeah, it turned out really good, and I just love how they included this as the base plate. They couldn't have thought of a better one, in my opinion. I think this is just spot on. And now we have the figure in full form. Starting with the head sculpt. Um, a lot of people said that this was one of the best head sculpts that Hot Toys had done uh, that year. Um, I could be wrong. I, th I believe that's what some people said. And I think this is a pretty good head sculpt. I mean, some people said that it doesn't look quite like Liam Neeson or Qui-Gon, but I don't know. I think maybe you could argue that about Liam Neeson, but I feel like this is how Liam Neeson looked in the movie as Qui-Gon, if that makes sense. There was just softer features uh, for him in that movie. You know, when you think of Liam Neeson, you think of sharp, hardened, like rough features, but I don't know. I watched episode one again not too long ago, and no, this is pretty accurate, the soft kind of features to the face. Like, I think it looks basically like he did in the movie. Um, and you gotta give Hot Toys really good credit for the hair work, the sculpting that they did on all of those pieces here. Slightly flexible, um, so you can kind of turn a little bit more. Um, but just the paint work and the and just the sculpting, all the multi-layeredness of it, really well done, very well done. Um, I think it looks very realistic. And same for the head sculpt and the paint work. I think it looks like Qui-Gon. And then continue down to a thin, kind of rough, uh, slightly stiff fabric here. Oh, it feels like there's a wire in there. There might be, because it like stays when I put it like that. Interesting. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. It'd be a thin wire though. Multi-layered uh, robe, as you can see. And yeah, just a simple robe, not really much else to it. Um, these are wired as well, which is awesome. I wish they would have done that with the Obi-Wan figure. Um, so that's really cool and into the very nice. So you can have them like battling and have it up, waving up in the air. Same for these in the back. They also both have wires running down the edges. And there's the back of the robe and the belt, of course, which has Velcro. So you have a Velcro piece here so you can remove the belt and this piece underneath the belt if you wanted to. Um, and so the details on the belt you have a metallic belt buckle piece, you have pleather material, and the lightsaber holster. So you would basically take the lightsaber like so and hook it on there. And it's not the most secure thing ever, but still works pretty decently. And then you continue onward, and you have some capsules here, some pockets, non-functional, just sculpted. Uh, rubbery plastic, you have the buttons, and you have more containers it looks like, and another storage thing, and yeah. And then you have the pants, which are just simple material, and the boots, which again, I love how with the Jedi figures that Hot Toys does, at least most of them, um, they actually have a fabric instead of uh, sculpted plastic or rubber. I think it just gives it so much more authenticity um, to feel this, and it actually feels like pleather. Uh, well, it feels like leather, I guess, but it's probably pleather. It just makes it seem so much more realistic. And just think about the tailing work that went into making this. I mean, that's really amazing. And unfortunately, with these, mine came out right here, and I couldn't get it to go back in. So I had to actually glue, and you can see the glue right there. I had to glue this back to make it stay in. So I believe these are tucked in with a tiny bit of glue maybe. So I would just be careful of those that can come out if you're not careful. Um, yeah, not really any details on the bottom. And pretty simple design on the back. Looks like the real deal. So in terms of articulation, starting with the head sculpt. So as you can imagine with the hair pieces on both sides, you can't really move this head sculpt forward too much. Um, yeah, just you're kind of limited on that. And uh, it's actually a separate from the neck, but the neck is attached to the body. And the neck actually is not flexible. It's a hard plastic, so you can't really get much flexibility with the neck at all. You can't really move the head back at all either because of this hair piece right here. 
Um, you can't, honestly, you can't move the head to the side either that much because the neck is stiff and the hair pieces. A little bit, but not much. You can turn the head, but again, you know, this hair is going to get caught, so really not too much. So technically not really 360. Yeah, more like, I don't know, 180. But, I mean, yeah, there's just not much flexibility in the head or the neck, as you would expect if you're going to have sculpted hair like this on both sides. Going down to the stomach and chest, there is, it's really stiff. So there is a joint between the chest and the stomach, really stiff. Though. There's padding on the back. I can feel the padding right here. So that could be what's holding it up. And so really you can only push forward that far and only back that far. Because there is a ton of padding on the, on the back. I can feel it. So who knows, maybe you could remove all this and take the padding off. I don't know, maybe it's like a fat suit. So the shoulders, you can move those up pretty high because it's a, a row, flexible robe here. And you can move the shoulders forward, like almost basically 360, but then you're gonna get the robe all caught up and you can move them back. So yeah, you can move them 360, interesting. Okay. And then the elbows are double jointed, of course. I think what plays into it actually compared to the elbow one figure is that the elbow one figure had the sleeve going all the way up the arm, whereas this one only has it on the forearm. So that makes this figure much more flexible with the elbows and the shoulders. That's probably what that is. So that's a really nice touch. And continuing down on the hips. So you can move the... Okay, so that fat suit is getting in the way. I can feel padding down here. So you really can't even move it up 90 degrees on the on the hips. And moving backwards, yeah, you can't really move backwards. The knee is ratcheted, that's good. And it can only do 90 degrees. Literally cannot push it farther than that. And forward, just a straight angle. Now, since the boots are a style of fabric, you can move them down about that far and up that far. Actually, you know what? I wouldn't do that because the joint just came out. I right, popped back in. So yeah, I mean, yeah, that joint can pop out kind of easily. And side to side, rotate. It probably will, I'm guessing, damage this fabric over time and the glue because it may not be that strong. So yeah, I wouldn't go crazy with it. But yeah, there is flexibility there. So what are my overall thoughts of this figure? Um, you know, I have to say, looking at this figure again after not checking it out for a while, um, I don't know, it's kind of losing interest for me personally. I think it's because uh, Star Wars The Phantom Menace might be, not counting the new Star Wars movies, but just the original trilogy and the prequels, this might be one of my least favorite Star Wars movies. Um, it's just not that interesting to me. Uh, it doesn't hold my attention that long. I think, you know, I, I like Liam Neeson. I think he's a great actor. He's done a lot of really awesome, iconic roles. And I think he, it was so cool to see him in Star Wars. And I liked his character, Qui-Gon. I wanted to see more of his character. Um, it's just that, I don't know, like, just the movie, yeah, you know, if you don't really like a movie that much, it's hard to really get excited about the figure or character that this movie is, you know, based on and or the character's based on. And so, like, honestly, my honest thoughts are that you know I'm glad I was able to get this figure at a decent price because it's it's kind of nostalgic because I was a kid when I watched Phantom Menace so there's definitely that factor in there and at the same time the only other episode one figure that I know of is is Darth Maul uh, I'm trying to think if there's anyone else comment below if, if there is I think that's everyone I don't know it's just kind of hard to there's not much uh there's not much of a collection to build with episode one if you only have Qui-Gon and Darth Maul um, so I wish they had made Obi-Wan. That'd be kind of cool to post Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan together. That'd be more nostalgic. Um, so I don't know. This is one of the figures in my collection that's actually at the bottom of the list because of those things. Uh, it's not like I hate the character. It's just not my favorite character. There's so many other characters in Star Wars that it's hard to compete. I think it's a great figure. I think it's really representative and highly accurate to the character from the movie. Um, so that's great. There's nothing wrong with how accurate the figure is. It's just more of a personal interest and opinion about how I feel about the character. Like I said, this is the bottom of the list. So this would actually be the, one of the Hot Toys figures that I would be okay selling if I wanted to get another figure or if I needed money. I would not mind letting this one go. I could live without this figure. And I, I've felt that way the longer that I've had this figure. Um, I think initially I got it just for the nostalgic factor and I guess excitement related to that. But 
that dies down kind of fast after a while when you have so many other cool fi figures and characters out there. Um, so in terms of the positives of this figure, I think the head sculpt is on point despite what other people have said. I really think in person, in hand, this head sculpt is accurate to the movie and accurate to how Liam Neeson looked in that movie. Now, it may not look exactly like Liam Neeson because we know Liam Neeson from other movies and we have certain ideas of how he looks. And when I watched episode one again, he did have a different look in that movie and this is how he looked. So to me, the head sculpt is accurate. Is it as high quality as Obi-Wan head sculpt? No, but it's, it's, it's getting there, it's getting there. And looking at it right now, I think it does look like Qui-Gon, so. And the fact that it's sculpted hair is a nice bonus. The problem with sculpted hair that I have, or like with this figure, is that when it extends past the shoulders, it limits the articulation of the head. Now they could have resolved that by making the neck a rubber piece like they did with the Black Widow figure. So I'm really surprised that that was not done. Uh, that could have easily at least gave you more articulation, but having a solid neck, hard plastic piece and sculpted hair, yeah, you really can't do much with that. So it, there's no point in really posing the head, to be honest. I mean, you can't, you know, just, I don't even bother with it. Um, I think the hair, the paintwork, and the sculpting on it is spot on, perfect. Uh, because of the articulation issue, I almost would rather have a, a rooted hair. But I'm torn on that because the sculpted hair works and I don't need the head to be in crazy poses, me personally. So I'm kind of in the middle. Um, I don't really care if it's sculpted hair or rooted hair. Although if it is rooted hair, it needs to look good and you have to deal with it and fix it and put stuff in it. Now if Hot Toys, I don't know, I've seen other companies do rooted hair and actually make it look good and stay in place. And, so I feel like, I mean, if Hot Toys could just do that, you know, just what these other companies are doing with rooted hair, then it could work. In terms of other positives, I love how the lightsaber lights up. I like how it includes extra accessories. You all hear me say this a lot. I wish more figures would include extra accessories, even the small ones that are in like one scene. So I'm glad that there's a holocron projector and all that stuff, the hook, the grappling hook. That's great. I want to see more of that. Um, so that's why it's a bonus for me. The tailoring is great. The boots are awesome. I love how the boots are actually fabric and they're not sculpted. It makes it more realistic, more flexibility. I like how there's three different holograms to choose from. And I love how they made the lightsaber exchangeable arm, the light up lightsaber effect. They actually made it to where the fabric of the sleeve is, is a separate piece. So it's far easier to put this lightsaber light up arm on and off. So that's definitely an improvement from the open one figure. And I like how they included some cool hands compared to usually what they usually include. Jumping into the negatives from that, the hologram projector hand I wish would had like a magnet in it or what I think would be even better and what I thought the prototype pictures were showing. I thought that the hologram projector was actually gonna be attached to the hand like the lightsaber light up feature. I thought that it would be like the lightsaber arm and that it would be a removable arm piece with batteries in it and I thought you would actually be able to light up the holograms on the hologram projector attached to that whole arm and that the only the holograms would be removable and the hologram projector would be fixed on the hand because it would be part of the light up feature and I really thought that I was expecting that I had no idea that so it's kind of disappointing and that was a negative for me is that the holograms don't light up, so they just kind of don't look very realistic. And so I'm not going to want to use them. And on top of that, the hologram projector falls out of the hand. It doesn't want to stay in the hand. You know, depending on the hologram you use, it just tips over. And it's a pain to get in the right position to balance it. Uh, so I really would have preferred, I would rather them have a hologram light up function arm where the hologram projector is not removable. If that means that it lights up and it's fixed and it's not going to fall off. I would much rather have that because that would be way cooler. And they could easily do that. I think it would be so awesome. Other negatives, I wish the comlink was better painted like the Obi-Wan one was. Um, at the same time, if it's accurate to the movie, then forget about that one. Forget about that negative. Um, so overall, um, this figure is at the bottom of my list. Not because of the quality of the figure, but because the character in the movie just aren't really that interesting to me compared to the other movies. And the more and longer I've had this figure, the less interested I have been in this figure. And I would be willing to sell this figure if I had to. But I'll probably keep it for nostalgia purposes and to just keep the Star Wars collection building. 
because I kind of would like to have all the Star Wars characters at one point. I think that'd be so cool. Only the ones for the original trilogy and the prequels. Not a fan of the new ones. Um, so yeah, um, let me know what you think in the comments below. I want to hear your opinion and what you think. And until the next video.